Hi, Joe. Hi, Clarence. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? Good. Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. Excellent. Let me start off by saying um, I saw Cyrano and Telluride. I bumped into you in the street, actually, outside of a coffee shop, and I absolutely love the film. I'm still gushing over it. So thank you so much for the time and thank you for the film. Thank you very much indeed. So um, you've talked a little bit about how this film is sort of about reconnecting and the importance of human connections. Certainly, I felt that when I saw it in Telluride, because that was the first time I'd kind of traveled outside of the pandemic, during the pandemic, and, and seeing the film, and see, particularly seeing the opening five or 10 minutes where every shot is filled with people. And I have to think thematically, that is intentional. Is that how you wanted to start the film with sort of bringing people together? Absolutely, uh, bringing people together actually in a theatrical um, experience. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, It was an utter joy to, be around so many people. We were only allowed a certain amount of people uh, on set, uh, a maximum of like 120 uh, who were all tested every day. Um, and for the very observant viewer, they'll notice that the same extras appear uh, as aristocrats in the theater scene and then bakers in the bakery and soldiers up on Mount Etna, um, because we had to create this kind of company of background artists to, uh, move with us but yeah certainly the idea of human connection um I, I every scene we did uh i'd ask myself in what way is this scene relating to that central theme who is trying to connect with who um and how are they doing are they succeeding in connecting or are they failing in connecting and often the characters um are kind of just missing each other um, or they think they're connecting, but, but in actual fact, they're on, you know, cross purposes. So let's go back to um, obviously Cyrano, what this version of Cyrano, this musical was a stage show off Broadway initially, um, which starred Peter and, and Haley at the time. Um, when you saw that, what was it about that, that the stage show that made you think this could work as a cinematic vision? Um, well, actually, it was before the off-Broadway version. Okay. Uh, prior to that, they did a, um, a tiny workshop production mm -hmm. up at the Chester Theatre in Connecticut. Um, and it, it was a theatre that seated like 120 people. Um, Haley invited me up to see the first night. And I knew the story well. And yet seeing Peter Dinklage... Uh, in that role without a nose struck me uh, with its kind of raw authenticity. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete brings his entire life experience to the, to the role. And at a time when I felt that people were being disconnected through the um, populist propaganda, basically you know um when we were being asked to um look for our differences rather than our similarities um suddenly here was a here was a, a piece of casting that talked very directly to m one of my central concerns which is that our similarities are greater than our differences um and and i had a very emotional reaction to that to that performance so I immediately went and asked Haley if I could approach Pete and Erica um, and she agreed they agreed and so we started developing the screenplay kind of in tandem with mm -hmm. Erica's uh, development of the theatre piece for Off-Broadway. Interesting so when you you come to shoot you you shoot this in Sicily, um, gorgeous locations in Sicily. Obviously, there are probably practical reasons, pandemic related, to shoot there because um, it's kind kind of a contained environment. But also, it 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 does yeah. give you a really compelling visual palette to work through. Can you talk to me about shooting there in Sicily? Uh, more specifically, even we were shooting in this town called Notto. Mm -hmm. um, and Notto was destroyed by an earthquake in 1692 and then rebuilt um, uh, as a kind of Baroque masterpiece in a very short space of time. So it has a kind of cohesive aesthetic. Um, uh, 
and so it kind of it, it enabled us to use it almost like a backlot. Um, uh, and actually, when we arrived, the 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 restrictions, the COVID restrictions, had been lifted. But as we were filming, um, we entered a second wave, and so things got tighter and tighter until it was really us only in the streets um, uh, <laughs> shooting, and and it was this strange ghost town. Um, but shooting during the pandemic kind of brought everyone together and it felt as if everyone, the town, uh, the cast, the crew, um, uh, dancers who had made their way to Sicily because they heard that this film was happening and they you know, had no other source of income. Um, it felt like everyone was kind of defiant in the face of this pandemic and 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 desperate to create something of hope and love and beauty in the face of such bleak circumstances yeah i remember you um talking a little bit about that when you introduced the film at uh, at telluride and it certainly resonates within the finished product um i hope so you know that's yeah. i always hope that the actual process of making the movie will somehow um, through osmosis be expressed in the experience of watching it. One of the things I found the most compelling about the film is how um, through dance motions and through this fluid sort of kinetic choreography that's going on, it, you're, you're telling the story through the dance sequences as much as you are through song, through word. Um, can you talk to me about creating the you, those the musical moments, how they were staged and, and blocked and things like that? I'm fascinated by um, subtext and, and how subtext can be expressed often uh, through physical um, movement um, and where the line between blocking physical, normal physical movement and dance uh, blurs and, and meets. Um, I've been privileged to work uh, with a choreographer called Sidi Labi Shakawi, uh, who I first met on uh, Anna Karenina, and then we did some stage work, and then he also did uh, this one. And he's an extraordinary talent. He he has this amazing ability to focus down on uh, the smallest difference in 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 gesture or, or or physical position and and how that conveys meaning um and so i would give him kind of broad notes or or, or directions as to the intention of the scene um for instance uh the bakery uh scene in which um cyrano sings your name I wanted somehow to express sensual desire. I felt that it was important that people felt and understood that Cyrano's desire of Roxanne is not completely cerebral. Um, uh, and I think it's easy to, because that would have been like, again, it would have been dismissing his love, you know? Right. Um, uh, I had this interesting experience where, where, you know, as I was developing the project, I would tell people about the fact that we'd cast Pete and um, and and people would, especially men, would be kind of confused by that and say, well, of course, you know, I mean, you're never really going to believe that Pete is meant for this woman, you know, of sort of uh, average height. Um, and I found that really confusing and, and kind of um, heartbreaking. Um, so I, I set a set out to prove them wrong almost and um and one of the things i felt was really important is to um make sure that his love was expressed sensually as well as intellectually um so that was the note to 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 larby for that dance um to create something kind of sexy and and amazing how he does that there's a shot there where um a baker a male baker puts his hand into a pot and then a female baker places her hand in the pot after um and it's one of the sexiest things i've ever seen and all it is is two people with their hands in a pot but somehow larvae kind of brings these things to life um 
another favorite dance of mine is is the is the guards at the garrison whilst Christian is singing. Um, yes, uh, I um, and and that for me was an expression. I remember in the nineties I saw a great British band called the Stone Roses play. Um, and they had a song called I Want to Be Adored. And I remember just in this in this concert, it was actually Reading Festival, I think, and there were probably 40,000 uh, people, men, majority, uh, all singing, I want to, I want to, I want to be adored. And I thought there was something so sweet about all these tough, you know, macho guys singing how they want to be adored. Um, and so... Uh, that was the influence behind that one. Um, uh, to, 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 at the beginning of the scene, there are these tough soldiers fighting, you know. Um, uh, but then when the song starts and the choreography, it becomes this kind of male yearning for tenderness and, and, and love. Yeah. You know, as you're talking about the 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 uh, the musical moment there in the in the bread uh, making the bread, I remembered e even just the positioning of the hands, like the way that the women's hands were so poised and they were pointed very specifically, and it was just it, it's absolutely gorgeous and uh, captured wonderfully by the cinematography, of course. Um, yeah, we had um, you know only uh, twelve dancers. And those dancers appear in every single dance number, whether they're playing bakers or aristocratic ladies or soldiers or whatever. That's amazing. So, you know, Cyrano is one of several brilliant musicals that premiered this year. Why do you think this year has become the year of the musicals unexpectedly? I think there's like seven or eight major musicals that have gone around this year. It's crazy, isn't it? I, um, I don't know. I'm not a social anthropologist, so I can't really. Uh, um, I think it might be something to do with musicals that reflect our world back at us, but through an abstracted form that allows for a sense of escape, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know that one of the choices, um, or one of the the driving factors in us choosing to shoot in Sicily was because of, you know, we were all in lockdown, and and um, and I wanted to take the audience on a journey to a place they might not have been before. Um, uh, almost, you know, I remember when I was a kid growing up in London and we didn't really get to you know go on holiday or stuff you know I mean we didn't get to go to amazing places and so when you watched a James Bond movie or a, you know Burt Lancaster and you'd, you'd you'd go to to these incredible uh otherworldly you know places and 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 you were transported and you got to you got to see the world through the movies and I guess um uh, certainly with the choice of Sicily that was that was one of the things I wanted to do. Excellent. Well, again, it's a it's a beautiful film. I hope everyone uh, goes out to see it in a theater on a big screen where it deserves to be seen. Um, thank you so much for the time and congratulations on the Golden Globe nomination for best uh, musical or comedy. Thank you. Thank you. Clarence. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye now.